Welcome to closed beta. We just finished alpha. Alpha is complete. And during alpha, we were able to do some stuff that was really critical for the game. We made sure that the servers were nicely stable. We got our socialization elements in. Uh, we torture tested the, te the tools, and I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. And then we also made sure that, uh, that claiming was really ironed out so that we were ready for large amounts of people to come in and be able to do that. Um, how did alpha go for us? Well, it was... <laughs> It was fantastic. The players really tore into stuff. And if you're if you're watching this and you participated in Alpha, you know what I'm talking about. But for those of you did, that didn't, we gave everybody in the game seven basic tools and they went just crazy with them. They invented all kinds of stuff we had absolutely no idea you could do, like micro voxels and super micro voxels and zero voxels and negative voxels, inlay techniques, tons of stuff. And all of that stuff is ready and waiting for you now because we did Alpha. But now we start closed beta. And closed beta is a very different phase than alpha, but we're still adding a lot to the game. In fact, the systems that we're adding to the game are really large impact ones. That's why we did alpha first to get this foundation solid. Now we're adding things like combat and danger, um, achievements, a crafting 2.0, which is a total overhaul of the crafting system that you're familiar with from, from alpha. We'll be adding in PVP elements, player studio, guild support, and a whole host of other things, including refinements on our existing features. Many people ask me, how long will closed beta last? And the answer is, as long as we need it. It's definitely going to be longer than alpha, but it's preparation for open beta. And when you're a free-to-play game, open beta is pretty close to just being launched. If you're new to the game and you've seen a lot of screenshots and videos out there, and you're stressed about being able to do stuff that's that cool, well, stop stressing. This isn't a race. This isn't, about, this isn't a get-to-the-end-game kind of game. You're basically going to learn at your own pace and be as creative as you want to be. We've got lots of tools for you to be able to figure it out. There's an F12 feature, which brings up all kinds of help tutorials so that you can see what's going on inside the game. There's a forum that's specially dedicated to tutorials uh, created by us and by players that you can look through at your own leisure, as well as just go hang out with other players, make some friends, see a claim where somebody's building something cool and ask them questions. This is a fantastic community. I've never been involved with a community this classy and this cool. And we're telling you everything. The roadmap of what's coming, what features we're working on, why we're working on them, that's all on the forums. In fact, our entire business plan is on the forums. If you want to find out what we're going to charge for and what our theories are behind our business, we've already told you all that. It's right there for you to take a look at. And of course, we're always on social media. If there is a social media, we're there. Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, all the different forums, uh, all the different things that we can do, we're doing. So when you ask questions, when you have concerns, we're finding out about them and getting right on it. And we are listening. This is a group effort. You are part of the dev team now, along with everybody else. So your feedback is steering the game. So while you're in closed beta, tell us about the bugs and the exploits that you find. Give us feedback on the artwork that you see. And tell us what you like and you don't like about the gameplay. We'll work to keep you informed, and together, we'll build something great. Hello gamers, that was Dave Georgeson. He was the EverQuest franchise lead. And the key word is was, and it's unfortunate because he was the face of the franchise. He's one of the original people that got me really interested in EverQuest Next and EverQuest Next Landmark. And for those that didn't hear, probably everybody heard, but Daybreak Studios bought out SOE, so they are now in control, and they ended up clearing house. So there's quite a few people that got laid off or ended up quitting as a result of that. Like I mentioned, Dave Georgeson, he was the EverQuest franchise lead. There's Eric Smith, producer. Jeffrey Butler, he was the creative director. Steve Danisur, lead content and story designer. And Mark Storer, he was a programmer. And then there is Linda Carlson, global community relations lead. And then there's a whole list of other people from Planet Side 2, H1Z1, DC Universe. And then a few other general staff, like community managers, that were all let go or quit. And that just sucks. Like, what's going to happen to EverQuest Next and EverQuest Next Landmark? Do you think they're both going to just go away? I mean, there was not a whole lot of people playing it. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's scary because this game is really cool. 
And I know a lot of people are saying, is that true to the EverQuest franchise? And, you know, that might be true, but for a builder game, I think this is pretty spectacular. Probably the best one out there. Oh, and I take some falling damage. Nice job with the grappling hook there, Batman. Anyway, cool little claim here, and this is just one of the you know, hundreds of awesome claims out there that people designed and made themselves hundreds of hours of work, probably. Something I could never dream of because I'm not that creative. But hopefully we can continue to see this game and then eventually EverQuest next. There hasn't been a whole lot of progress on Landmark over the last year, and, you know, some people might argue otherwise, but I don't know. It's It, it might have been a good thing, all the layoffs, but something tells me it's not a good thing and hopefully I don't wake up one day and read that Daybreak decided to go ahead and pull the plug on EverQuest Next and Landmark. It's a cool claim here. Who do we have? It's a Jor's Castle. 30 likes. Alright. This is quite the little castle here. Oh. I mean, check out the sky. Everything about this game is just really cool. I mean, sure, there's limited PvE right now, and the PvP is pretty atrocious, but from a building standpoint, it's pretty amazing. Let's go down here and see what we got. I haven't been inside yet. Alright. I'm probably going to run around here, and over the next few days, or excuse me, next few weeks, months, capture some of these cool creations because if the, if the plug is pulled it'd be a shame for these places not to live for a, at least a little while on YouTube. EverQuest Next was the most hyped game or in the top three most hyped games for MMORPG.com for quite some time. How do I get out of here? I don't know. So for it to be in question now it would have been unheard of, you know, a couple of years ago, but I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Let me go ahead and show you a complete list of everybody that was laid off and let me know in the comment section below. Do you think that this game is going to somehow make it? Do you think it's going to be totally different if it does stick around? Do you think they're going to scrap Landmark and keep EverQuest next? Do you think they're going to keep Landmark but scrap EverQuest next? I, it's really... There's a lot of routes they could go. Hopefully they are done trimming the fat, if that's what you want to call it. And hopefully they decide to keep it. And... All right, we'll see here. All right, here's the list. And here's the master list by THJaw. This is on Reddit. I'll put a link down in the description box if you want to check this out yourself. He goes, these are all the developers and employees known to be laid off at this time. He said there could be more as well. I already went over the EQ Next employees that either quit or got laid off so I'm going to go over the EQ2 there's the artists, designers, developers, community managers, lead designers for EQ1, game designer for EQ1, EQ1 developer there's Planetside 2, everything from the creative director to the producer to the build master, level designer, designer vehicle balance, database marketplace, QA another QA, H1Z1, there's an artist, technical designer code base DC Universe online there's the producer so there's a lot of big wigs here and this is quite the shakeup so we'll have to see how things pan out general staff there's Glenda Carlson she's one of the most known people well was one of the most people in the company she was the director of community relations and then there's three community managers down there so once again that's the list of people that either quit or got laid off since the acquisition of SOE by Daybreak and this is what Daybreak had to say. As part of a strategic decision to rationalize the business, Daybreak Game Company announced today that it will eliminate positions in both the San Diego and Austin studios. This alignment of resources better positions the newly independent studio for future growth opportunities and developments, including del delivering on its legacy of making top online games and establishing a solid foundation for future multi-platform success. These reductions will not affect the operation of current games. Yeah, we'll see about that. And the company will continue on its mission to partner with its player community to drive the future and push the boundaries of online gaming. All right, that covers that. Let me know down in the comment section below. 
Are you nervous? Do you think things are going to get better? Do you think they're going to get worse? Just let me know. All right, this has been Noobzilla. I want to thank you all for watching, and happy gaming.